Because I asked. It's what I call the Nardwar method, and it's what he credits his entire career to. Asking. My guest this week came from just that, asking friends if they knew anyone who would be fun to sit down and interview. My friend Alex said she knew a stuntman, and I was sold. Then I looked into his roles, and the nerd in me started to light up like it was Christmas Day. Today my guest Justin Howell and I discuss how he got into stunts and how he landed work in some of the projects that he has been in. Including, but not limited to, Avengers Endgame, Avengers Infinity War, X-Men Dark Phoenix, Titans, Supergirl, Suicide Squad, Arrow. The list is long and epic. Honestly, the projects he has been involved in are some of my favorite shows and movies. It's crazy. So with that being said, and my nerd meter is fully charged, let's just jump into the bumpy and bruisy world of stunt performing with Justin, right now on The Bomb with Ozzy Napalm. Welcome back to The Bomb with Ozzy Napalm, the most explosive podcast in Kingston, Ontario. And friends, I'm really excited for this one, as today I am joined by stunt performer and actor Justin Howell. Justin, thanks so much for being with us. Absolutely, brother. So off the bat, I'm going to ask perhaps maybe the most obvious question, but when I told people I was sitting down with a stunt performer, it's the one that everyone wanted to know. How did you get into stunts? Because growing up, for example, I wanted to be an actor or involved in the arts, but stunts isn't even something I was aware of until my early 20s as a job, if you know what I'm saying there. Totally. So how did you actually land into stunts? So for starters, everyone gets into it in a different way. So me telling the story is by no means a roadmap. A lot of people have different ways that they got into stunts. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, I started Taekwondo at a very early age when I was five years old and progressed on the demo team when I was a black belt, which is kind of uh, a team that went around performing in North America, went to Columbus, Ohio, kind of all around Canada. And I loved it. I loved performing. I loved doing the martial arts and the flips and stuff, the acrobatics. And my thought at a very young age was, how can I do demo team forever? Right. And my dad at a very young age said, what about being a stuntman? And I was like, yep, that sounds like, can I swear here? Yeah. Is this a PG podcast? I was like, that's the coolest shit ever. I want to do that for sure. So very early on, I lost my passion for schoolwork and did not focus. Right. Uh, but I was always motivated to do things athletically and progress forward. I, I joined cheerleading, uh, made it onto Team Canada a few years later. Oh, cool. Uh, one. Yeah, I won in uh, Orlando, Florida at Worlds and cheerleaded for 10 years, uh, progressed tumbling there and yeah, kind of built up an athletic base on that. Went to Medieval Times, as you know, I was a knight at Medieval Times for two years, mm -hmm. sword fighting in the sand, jousting and went from Medieval Times to a movie called Pompeii, terrible movie, don't go see it, <laughs> uh, which is like gladiators fighting in the sand, Kit Harrington, and then it kind of snowballed and progressed from there. And so with that background, you already had the natural years of training to get into doing the stunts. Yes. Very fortunately, I was training to be a stuntman from a very young age, just passively without thinking about it, which is definitely a leg up from what most people have. And you say your dad suggested it to you. What is his background to have suggested that? Or is it just kind of something he thought of? I think just insight. I think he was just thinking about what entails, you know, fake fighting right. and the stuff we were doing on demo team and how to progress that into a career. And that was kind of the only path that he could think of. And uh, after doing a little bit of research, we both said, yeah, this, this seems like the coolest thing ever. Let's, uh, let's do what we can to get into this. <laughs> and to get out there, is it like acting where you need an agent and whatnot like no. that? No? No, absolutely no agents and stunts whatsoever. Okay. If you tried to use an agent to get into stunts, you would be laughed at. So don't try that. Uh, it's a small community. So what you want to do is put together a resume mm -hmm. that shows your training background, anything you've done stunts on before, uh, a demo reel, which is like a minute to two minute clip of all of your skills, showing your fighting, your falling, uh, maybe any special skills you have, if it's like BMX or rollerblading or high falls or high diving, so on and so forth. And uh, a headshot just to show what you look like with your stats, your height, weight. And then you want to look up the coordinators on production, stunt coordinators are the ones that hire stunts, and you want to get that package with your resume, headshot, and demo reel to them, however you can, whether that be email or trying to get onto set to show them. Uh, you want it to be seen by them so you can hopefully get hired at some point. It's kind of the, the stepping stones. It must be a very inclusive field, too, because you need all shapes, sizes, and types to Absolutely. stunt double, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, absolutely. One of my buddies is, you know, he, he as he joked, 150 wet, maybe five, five or whatnot. And he said, it's probably a field he yeah. could never get into. And I told him, kids, teenagers. It, I was just going to say that kids, it's hard to find doubles for kids. So if you're very petite, especially if you're under five feet, you can do an entire career doubling kids. You'll have lots of work. Well, and on that note, one of the projects you worked on was Umbrella Academy. Was there many... Yeah. Do, do kids get into stunts? Is that allowed? Or was it mainly teenage or smaller stunt doublers? Uh, the I, I assume you're talking about... I'm sorry, I forget the character's name. Number five Is it number five? Mm-hmm. Short one? Yeah. Number five is doubled by Johnny Canes. And Johnny Canes is uh, probably 5'4", buck 30. But he's an amazing, amazing stuntman. Wicked parkour about parkour and capoeira background. Uh, and he doubles kids a lot. And how old is he? Oh, Johnny... Uh, Forgive me, Johnny, probably 30 years old. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. You know, like, the work is <laughs> yeah. there for you. Exactly. Oh, yeah, of course, for sure. Now, it's got to be sort of a nerve wracking field. Do you remember the first time you were maybe anxious or scared to perform a certain stunt? Oh, my gosh. Ooh. The, uh, the first time being anxious was definitely my first time getting hired, period. But that was going to come with the territory. Right. Uh, and, and that was on Beauty and the Beast was my first union credit. Okay. And I was basically just getting tackled into a breakaway wall unit. So a bunch of like candy glass and things would fall down. And I wasn't so much scared of uh, getting injured, more so scared of just doing it well enough that they bring me back again. Right. Uh, but then further on in my career, probably a year later, I was on Suicide Squad. This is probably the most scared I've been to do a stunt was uh, I was in the driver's seat of an 18 wheeler. And it's going down a main road at 40 kilometers an hour. And I had to jump out and do a rollout on the concrete in like a certain area. Oh, wow. And uh, I just remember setting up for it and they're counting down. And I'm like, what what the fuck am I doing here? This is crazy. (laughs) But all in well, I felt confident going into it as well. So it was was all good in the end. The scene, unfortunately, never made the movie. But uh, it's definitely a stunt I remember doing. Well, and that's funny. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't remember that scene being in the film. Did yeah. it take many takes or did they one and done that one? I did two of that one. Two takes of that yeah. crazy stunt to not make it in the film. Two takes of that. Now, is that, a, yeah. is that yeah. a common thing in the field? Do you notice on the projects you work on, there's stunts you do many takes for that don't actually make the show or the movie? Oh, very odd. I would say 30% of the stuff I've shot hasn't been actually made. Really that uh, much? eh? Yeah. Well, even if you do a fight, like a lot of that fight's going to cut out. Mm -hmm. So you do like a a 50 beat fight and maybe 20 beats actually make it into the scene. That happens quite often. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, and I know a big thing that's done to compensate actors who need the face time is a lot of that hyper cutting as well. So just like you said, a lot gets dumped by that. Yes. Yes. So one of the things I noticed interesting while researching the projects you've been involved in is uh, mm-hmm. the differentiation between what it's actually listing your role as. So some say stunt yeah. performer, some just say stunt, some will say stunt lead. That one's yeah, a little that's... more specific. That one's self-explanatory. But why is it broken down like that? Is it kind of just you do mass work and it's stunts or... It's different productions just put the credits in different ways. Right. Uh, sometimes you put the credit in yourself and they just edit it one way or the other. But whether it's stunts or stunt utility or uh, sometimes you, you put stunt double and then they put a character name and sometimes they just put stunt double, period. It's really just up to the discretion of the production how the credit is listed at the end of the day. Right. Got you there. And yeah. Yeah. Sort of similar with your resume versus your IMDb page. On your resume, you have certain things listed, whereas on your IMDb page, there's maybe roles that, in my head, as a resume, it's like, oh, why isn't that on there? Is there a specific reason your actual resume has what it has on it? Oh, my resume might be out of date by about a year or two. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't looked at my resume recently. But um, yeah, so I, I sometimes you have a bigger role on certain productions, so I'll tend to put those productions up higher. Uh, and the, the ones I have a lesser role in down below, even if it's a, a bigger feature. Right. Uh, and I just kind of organize it that way. Yeah. And then I, I usually put more in depth on my resume for like, for instance, which actor I doubled on said show mm-hmm. or whether I was core team on that show or just, you know, did stunts for a week or something on the show. Uh, cause 
when coordinators are looking at the resume, they know the difference and they, they want to know what you did on the show specifically. And that's another interesting thing I noticed is the far column on your resume. Those are the stunt coordinators I've yes. gathered. Yes. yes. And so exactly. productions will look at that as well as what you've done, I assume. Yeah. So the, the production the production doesn't really even look at the resume. It's pretty well only the stunt coordinator. Oh, really? So the reason I haven't put categories for the fields is because it's immediately obvious to the coordinator what he's looking at. He doesn't need a breakdown in that sense. Right. Uh, he's going to look at that column on the right and say, okay, these are the people he's worked for and so on and so forth. It's not going to the production itself. The production might see your headshot and maybe, maybe your demo reel, but they'll never see your resume. So a stunt coordinator also almost acts like a casting director then for the stunt performers. Absolutely. That's interesting. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah. Well, in a lot of cases, the, uh, the they're hiring for a specific scene. So say they're hiring for a fighting scene, they'll bring forth people that can fight and present them to production and production might uh, choose the people that can fight or the coordinator will choose them directly. Right. But for instance, it's, if it's a driving scene, I'm not a driver. So the coordinator is not going to present me as, a, as an option for them mm-hmm. or, or a fire burn scene. They're not going to present me for fire burn stuff. So they, they kind of have their pool of guys for specific things and they'll bring those guys forward to production or they'll hire them directly if they have the power to do so. So how do you get in with the stunt coordinators? They just find your reels or you shop it out? Yeah, that, that's initially what you're trying to do is get uh, in front of them to show them what you can do. So you can show them your demo reel and your headshot. And it really just takes getting a, a shot at first for them to hire you. And if you do well, your reputation will spread and more co- coordinators will hire you and so on and so forth. Right. So it's a, it's a difficult starting process, but once it starts going, as long as you're doing a good job, you'll, you'll keep going. And I've noticed that as well. You have multiple works with the same coordinators on your list. A- absolutely. Absolutely. You, you'll tend to work for uh, the same coordinators a lot. Yeah. And I assume they work with the same production companies, so you'll kind of fall into you know, the woodwork today. Yeah, that's a little over my head, but I think I think they tend to work with the same producers pretty consistently. And so you've also worked on some of the biggest projects. And when I say ever, I mean, you know, ever with the Marvel movies. Yeah. One thing I've been wondering is on those sets, is there is there much red tape and security versus other normal sets? Oh my, Marvel is crazy. If you took a picture on a Marvel production, you are out the door for sure. Don't even think about it. Marvel's the most locked down sets of all time, I would say. And are you allowed to mention you're working on a Marvel production even? Or is it just when it's out? I wouldn't even risk it. I wouldn't risk it until it's out or until you're right at the end. Yeah. And see, that's something I have. I've been wondering as well, because those are such big productions with, I assume those are some of the biggest uh, stunt teams you've worked with as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But both talent wise and in numbers. Yeah, and what do the numbers on average look like versus, uh, you know, a comparable, let's say, one of your DC works versus one of the big Marvel scenes? How many stunt yeah. people are on set? So, well, I can give you specifics. So for uh, Infinity War Endgame, I was doing uh, placeholder motion capture for Wakanda for the Outriders, okay. which are like the big form Thanos creatures. Mm-hmm. And I want to say for, I was there for uh, two and a half months for that, and... I want to say there was um, probably 30 to 40 stunt people in that scene, uh, as opposed to a typical DC uh, TV show like The Flash or Supergirl or Legends or Arrow. Uh, a, a typical scene might be anywhere between like three to 10 stuntmen. Oh, wow. Is 10 being on the higher end for the most part. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, but it varies. It varies, of course. Yeah, of course, depending yeah. on what you're working on. Yeah. Now, uh, have you uh, got to work with Guy De Silva at all? I have, yeah, yeah. I worked with Guy on uh, King Guy on Infinity War Endgame, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, he's one of, uh, actually one of the people who kind of put stunt performers on my radar as something that I like to watch. Like I mentioned with you, uh, the Corridor Crew guys and the stunt men, stunt women react. Yeah, they're very cool. Such a cool series. And so watching through those and seeing what he's been on, one of the first things that kind of clicked in my head is, you know, maybe Justin's... Be, even been on one of his teams and worked with them so very cool yeah, yeah yeah i mean he certainly has a much bigger role in those productions than i do i was uh i was very much a small role on a big film in that sense he's a uh, t'challa correct yes yes that's yeah, my understanding yeah, that's awesome now what are some of your favorite stunts that you've got to perform and not specifically on the marvel just in general like what is one of the things that on your reel is that to you sticks out 
Um, I like hero stuff mm -hmm. for the most part. I like being the hero and doing uh, intricate, interesting choreography that looks nice. Right. Uh, I liked a lot uh, working for Larnell Stovall on Titans. I was doubling Alan Richardson's character Hawk. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's just kind of like a big, burly, like uh, crunch him, smash him up. So we had a, we had a good scene, a uh, big ring fight that I loved doing uh, in, in that one. Yep. That's probably one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. And some of the stuff we're doing now is really cool in uh in budapest here yeah just trying just trying to work my way up to interesting characters with in-depth choreography that's what i enjoy the most well and what you said there kind of touched on something i had later in my notes is i've noticed a lot of the projects you've worked on are sci-fi superhero -y type things is that a personal yeah. choice or kind of the mm -hmm. lane you've kind of landed in due to the snowballing of you know he did this yeah. now he's doing this um, I think part of that is just my height and weight classification. Being a six three guy at uh, I'm like two hundred and twenty five pounds right now. Right. Is I tend to either play superheroes or fight superheroes a lot, uh, just because you know nobody wants to see Arrow beat up a five five hundred and thirty pound guy. <laughs> right. Wanna, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They want to see him go blow for blow with a big dude. So that uh, that happens a lot for sure. And touching back on that other question, has there been a stunt that you just hated having to do? Uh, anything where it's super cold out. <laughs> falls in negative 20 on concrete just hit differently well that's funny too because uh one of the things that i know about stunt performers is the home alone crew are kind of known as the mad oh, men yeah. for what they were doing back then yeah yeah they, they that's the home alone is oh yeah the big legs up back fall they we call it a home alone that fall is called the home alone in the industry <laughs> <laughs> Now, when you double for, say, uh, like on Suicide Squad, yeah. you doubled for Joel Kinnaman, right? Yes. Are you working with that, the actor hand in hand? Or is it sort of, he's in, now, you know, cut, bring in Justin for the stunt? Or is it more in depth? Are you actually working with the leads you lead double for? The, um, all the pre-stuff is done very hand in hand with the double or with the, with the actor, I should say. Yeah. So the coordinator and the fight coordinators will build the scene kind of prior. We'll all build it together with the stunt people. Then the actor will come in. They'll see the scene out as it exists. This, this is how it works for the most part, not always. Mm -hmm. The actor will come in and see how the scene has been built, maybe give notes. We make those adjustments together as a team. And then on the day, a lot of it will be swapping in and out. Um, and then the stunt person's role also is to watch the actor on the the previous monitor or oh, sorry on the monitor to see uh any adjustments that can be made to make things look better in that sense as well maybe selling a punch um or a motion here and there things like that so it's it's definitely a team all the way through but uh especially in the early development stages of the scene so that's a really privileged position to be in working with the bigger names in hollywood have you ever got Absolutely. starstruck or are you just for the most part down to earth they're just people Oh, they're all, they're all just people. They're pretty cool in the most part. Like even working with Will Smith, he's the nicest guy ever. He, he's everything you hope he is and brings up all of those around him. So yeah, like you, you are starstruck at first perhaps, but very quick, you, quickly you realize that uh, they're people too. Anyone who sticks out in your memory for just being a favorite to work with? Uh, Will Smith is probably number one. Yeah. Um, I just worked with, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, like. <laughs> Uh, Woody Harrelson, sorry. Woody, Woody Harrelson. Were, when you mentioned your works in uh, Budapest, I didn't want to ask if I, you know, could say what you're working on. Because again, I don't know about the red tape. I can, I will, I will. But uh, Woody Harrelson was also an absolute pleasure. Wicked cool, remembers your name. Uh, oh, I, can't, I want to tell a story, but I can't because it, it gives up too much. Fair. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can say I'm working with um, a publisher driver is playing Master Chief on Halo uh, TV series here in Budapest. And I'm, I'm doubling him for that amazing because that's so funny i didn't want to ask but i've been seeing online throughout this week actually pictures of the warthog popping up online and people saying look what is in budapest and i made that click kind of <laughs> right away and i was like oh i don't want to ask him but that's really yeah, awesome yeah yeah i think i'm safe i think i'm safe to say that much but nothing else that i can say yeah <laughs> that's really cool and so i assume that's a really big production then got to be a lot of props involved huge production Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, some of the biggest stages with the most intricate sets I've seen in a long time. Now, that's got to be a bit difficult, too, right now with what's going on globally. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, uh, we get tested five days a week. So we get tested really? every morning. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then your tests carry over for the following days. 
you know, I'm quarantined in a hotel, uh, drive to Satin back, and that, that's pretty well my life. I can order Uber Eats or their equivalent of Uber right, Eats yeah. here. And that's it. Thankfully, we have a really, really great rehearsal studio with a uh, full gym weight set up and uh, protein shakes and, and all that kind of stuff, which is pretty awesome. Now, on a normal movie set, I assume, especially being on a stunt team, there's probably a lot more like camaraderie, go out afterwards, hang out together. Normally there would be, yes. Yeah, because sure. it seems like it would be one of those brotherhood, sisterhood type jobs where just like yeah. putting your body on the line daily, you got to Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially when you're, you know, you're, sometimes you're trusting these people with your lives when you're on different rigs and right. different setups for, uh, yeah, yeah. So absolutely, you want to be a team. You want to love the people you're working with. Very important. Do you have any stunt performers specifically that you like working with most that you would, if you became a stunt coordinator, you would hire? Yeah. Like, I have absolute brothers in the industry, like Chris DeMeo and Nathaniel Shooker and Jackson Rosario and my girlfriend, Brittany Spatiri, is getting into stunts. So, yeah, I have, like, absolute, like, I love you homies that I would trust forever mm -hmm. that I would love to work with more, I'm sure. But everyone in the industry is honestly awesome to work with. If you've made it far enough to be uh, a consistent working stuntman, most people are just going to like working with you. It's almost like in the Top Chef world where everyone kind of knows the name of, you know, the famous chefs with the good yeah. restaurants. You all start kind of knowing each other. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I, I would anticipate that's that's what it's like. And you mentioned your partner, Brittany, is getting into stunts. That's yes. actually something I had in my uh, notes here is, did yeah. you guys meet on a set or? We, we actually met through cheerleading. She was my flyer in cheerleading. And she has a dance background. And she did a show called Zombies. Mm -hmm. And then another show called Dare Me, which was a cheerleading show. And she liked being on set and stuff. And uh, yes, she kind of progressed through the dance world. But now she started doing some martial arts and stuff and is loving that too. So she's kind of doing this, this balance between dancing and stunts. And I think she's leaning more towards doing more stunt stuff and training that way. Right. Which is awesome. Yeah. Well, and I watched her <laughs> yeah. stunt reel and it's really good. And I assume too that both doing stunts, that's got to help probably with the odd hours and the travel in or... Yes, it's nice having a, there, there's such a high divorce rate in the stunt world. It's nice having a partner that also exists in that world. So they understand the ridiculous hours and demands and, um, you know, working overseas and stuff like that, that come along with the job. Right. And, you know, to, if she had got in earlier, one of the things that was in my head is like, you guys already kind of look like Hawk and Dove. How awesome would that have been to be Hawk and Dove together? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be cool for sure. <laughs> so is there many struggles and challenges in getting into the industry? Like, is it very competitive? Yes. Like, I know when I went to school, I actually went to George Brown for theater and it instantly killed the passion for me because everyone was so cutthroat and we weren't even going out for auditions yet. Right. My professors would say you know, get used to rejection, this and that. And it's like, cool, but how about the success stories? So there's some positive. And for yeah. years that took me out of it. And only recently I've been starting to try to get back into the arts and whatnot. But yeah. is stunts like that at the start or is it easier entry? It's, it's, so in order to work on a union production, you have to be a member of the union. Mm -hmm. To become a member of the union, you have, you have to fill a role that nobody else can fill or uh, there's nobody available to fill that role. So it's a difficult starting process for sure. Anticipate that it's going to take you at least a year. For a lot of people, it takes longer. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to develop your skills and really have faith during that time. That's really the, the, the testing in the fire, if you will. Now, would you say to, before getting into stunts, someone should have some sort of skill that would help. Like you said, you were into tumbling and parkour beforehand. Yeah. Is there something that someone should kind of have like that before getting into it? Or would you say it could all you be should, learned? I mean, you should definitely have an athletic base of some kind. Right. People come from all different kinds of backgrounds, you know, dance, football, gymnastics, some people from like pro drifting world, some high divers, like totally a, a variable of backgrounds. But uh, yes, you should be coming into it with, an athletic ability and you should be developing skills that are going to need to be used on camera as you're trying to get in at the same time too. Mm -hmm. uh, I do a lot of fighting. So my recommendation is that you pick up a martial art and that you work on film fighting. Uh, Cause I think those are some of the most sought after skills these days. Right. So that would be my recommendation. And earlier too, you said that you don't do the driving stunts. Now, is that something that someone 
like a really good driver, will they only drive or are you expected to kind of do falls and tumbles as well if you're a stunt driver? So I I think this has kind of changed over time. Mm -hmm. I think if you asked that question 20 years ago, they would have said that a stuntman should be a jack of all trades and should be able to do high falls and fire burns and fight and and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But I think you're seeing more of a rise of specialists today whereas drivers tend to do mostly driving, Mm -hmm. fighters tend to do mostly fighting, not to say that they don't kind of go back and forth, but uh, a a lot of times people tend to stay within their niche nowadays, which I think is great. I think it's nice to have people that absolutely excel at one thing and bring them out for that one thing. And it must kind of make filming easier too when you know that, say, this person's doing the falls out of the window, Justin's doing the fights. Totally. Yeah, totally. Totally. With movies like John Wick not only taking practical stunts to the next level in modern filmmaking, but also being directed by a stunt coordinator, Chad Stileski there, right. yeah. do you feel that stuntmen and stunt women moving into directing roles is healthy and good for the industry? And how do you think the overall effect on movies is going to be do you think that stunt performers are going to get more acting roles or do you think that actors are going to get more stunt training (laughs) that's a great question i love the idea of actors getting more stunt training it's nice to see actors that put in like a a lot of time into developing that skill like keanu reeves Mm -hmm. i love that more stunt coordinators are moving into directing i love the idea that the way we shoot a previs and uh, all the adaptation with the camera movement with the fight and stuff makes it to the camera shoot on the day and is, and is seen through all the way. To me, the, the fights in John Wick are some of the most beautiful fights on, on, on television, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I love, that. I love that they're able to do it uh, as they saw from the beginning. You know, it's not shot differently on the day. They they very much put a lot of time and effort into this previs and they've seen it all the way through and it's been shot that way. And the whole fight tells a great story and the, the actor is able to do all the action immaculately. Yeah, and it does everyone justice who's in it because the long takes, especially they do in that film series, you really get to yeah. see the stunts being put in, but it also feels more visceral because you get to see a hit fully follow through. You get to see the gunshot, yeah. the body hit, the body fall. And like we oh, said yeah. earlier, when you get all those hyper cuts in, not only does it get hard to follow the action it doesn't feel as real as yes. when you can see it yes. a b c like that for sure yeah yeah so coming up to the end here because i didn't want to take too much of your time is there no any major injuries that you've sustained while doing stunts knock on wood thankfully no just just ouches so far just nothing ouches. That's, uh, shut, yeah nothing that's shut down my career and I'd like to keep it that way. <laughs> Anything that you've seen on set happen? Any accidents on productions you've been part of? Uh, oh, no, I, I, can't, I couldn't bring those up, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, stuff happens. Unfortunately, sometimes things do happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try our best to avoid those scenarios and do everything we can to keep it safe while while remaining, uh, you know, looking gnarly and looking like uh, like hits and hard and and cool. Well, thank you so much for being with me today. And before I let you go, other than Halo, is there any projects we can look forward to seeing you stunt in coming out this year? Yes. Uh, Man from Toronto, Woody Harrelson, Kevin Hart movie coming out ooh, probably later this year, early next year. Right. Uh, check it out. I think it's going to be very cool. Did that one with uh, Phil Silvera, who's an amazing stunt coordinator. And, uh, and Micah Carnes, who's uh, the fight coordinator on it. It's probably one of my favorite teams I've ever worked for. So it was an absolute pleasure. And that's got to be a really funny and fun crew to be around. My goodness, Kevin Hart and Woody Harrelson. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When it comes out, I'll tell you some stories. Well, I hope to have (laughs) you on again and have a follow-up on this, brother. Absolutely. Sounds good. Well, thanks so much, man. Take care. Thank you. Have a good one. Cheers. Cheers.